Hey, it's Chris. Let's do this crowdfunding roundup. What do you need to know? And you know what? I think it's about time that we do another don't back anything video. So next week, we'll have that one come out too because there's plenty of high profile projects between this week and the next week and the past two weeks that we need to cover them all. And if you missed yesterday's video, well, that was the don't buy it at retail video. One of my favorite ones of the month and in case you're liking a little bit of the unboxing and rambling videos from these past two weeks the two that i've done so far well don't fret there will be another one upcoming next week and what are we talking about well you can see here it's empty star wars unlimited i broke the seal folks okay that's not why you're here though crowdfunding what do you need to know let's go no joke, right? As I'm sifting through like the page seven or eight right now of these launched campaigns, trying to figure out sometimes even if it's like a board game or a tabletop game on disguise, you can't really tell nowadays. Like this one, Cozy Quest Collection. What is it? Oh, it's a tabletop RPG. Never mind. Just irritating. I, this new flip up thing from Kickstarter too. Horrible for user interaction. I know I heard you guys in the comments. You heard me too, but right? Still crap Kickstarter. Oh, look, it's fancier. Fancier doesn't mean better, right? That's why you tune into my channel. I'm not fancy. And first up, we have to start with what the flying fruit cake and fudge knuckers is going on here with the dead keep, right? I, I, I don't know. I didn't see this announced and maybe I'm just blind, right? Maybe I'm just blind and I'm kind of going to blow this up out of, you know, nothing. It's clearly nothing. This is a pre-order, folks. You see that above my head right now? This is a pre-order. Wait a second, wait a second. We're not getting into crowdfunding. You're just using GameFound now as a pure pre-order? So is that the blood pack that was made? That they're just basically gonna become a storefront for Ximon? Because that's what it looks like. That's weird. Am I the only one hand raising thinking that's freaking weird at this point? Because I, I clicked over on this expecting this page not to be have launched yet because I didn't think it was launching until like the 21st, but you can pledge, you can follow, you can go. I, I don't understand. And maybe I'm just looking at this too soon. And you know, tomorrow at the time of me looking at this, it'll make a whole lot more sense and there'll be clarity and the clouds will part just like a beautiful Michigan winter day where the sun comes out, it's snowing, hailing, and going anywhere within 24 hours from 70 degrees to 25 degrees, right? 90 minutes, 14 plus age, one to six players. You're pre-ordering right now because they're FOMOing you. Cooperative dungeon diving for one to six players. Um, you get this expansion as the little add-on here. And it's a troll rider, pre-order exclusive, pre-order exclusive. So why or pre-order thou? Why is it a pre-order as opposed to a pledge? What's the difference? Oh, don't worry. There's none of that on the page whatsoever. I'll save you the spoilers there. So that's it. You get the free little alcove thing. Awesome. Fantastic. Limited edition Goblin Chaos expansion. So yeah, guess what? There you go. You get three exclusives. They're FOMOing you for $150. Is it really $150, right? Oh, that's a great deal for $150, Chris. No, folks, they're saying, okay, hey, guess what, guys? You can pay $100 and get it free shipping, or you can pay $85 and $15 shipping. Which one lurks a little bit better in our hamster brains every time, right? Ooh, $100 in free shipping. That's what this looks like to me. $160, actually, if I could read. $160. Base game plus two expansions, $160. Is that a good deal when you frame it like that? Plus shipping? Oh, that doesn't sound as good anymore. Except it's got the exclusive thing, Chris. FOMO. Right? Oh, and by the way, it's not supposed to be delivered until March 2025. And if you're looking at it, anything like this with a miniature-driven campaign from CMON, add six to nine months to it because they're several projects behind. They've already done one project this year. So if you don't think that this is going to be, I would imagine, behind the majority of the other ones that they've already funded for, that means they have to put out, what, how many other projects between now and then? Do you really think this is going to get slotted higher? I mean, we have the Cthulhu Dark Providence at, at retail pre-order for CMON as well that is ending later this year. So that's going to get priority as well. What, what the deuce? You know? So really, this says down here, you know, $50. You don't care about that. Again, I think it looks okay. I think it's Mordred all over again. 
where you don't give me any information to make a decision. It's a flip of the coin. Is it going to be Dune Arrakis or is it going to be Trudvang freaking Legends? Which, you know what? I've got the rest of that coming to me. I don't really want the rest of it at this point because the, the core was, was not good. It was not good. It was okay. And that's what you're potentially going with this. It looks cool. You get campaigns, but again, there's narrative. Like the narrative was not good in Trude Vang. It wasn't awful, but I don't really want the not so great Trude Vang narrative combined with Cthulhu Death May Die. Like that doesn't appeal to me. Just give me Cthulhu. I don't need a story with this. Let me bash it out, smash it out and crash it out. Or give me Grim Coven from Awaken, right? And oh, don't worry though. You can stretch pay this as well. I don't know. It's got the zombie side labeling on the side here, potentially. I'm just looking at it because you know what? Um, there is a rule book here. We can go down to that and we can check this out as well. But just kidding. Don't worry about actually reading it yourself because it's 48 freaking pages. 48 pages. I mean, if you scroll through this, it's zombie side quests, folks. Up to six adventurers. Choose your quest. Place your tiles. Spawn. And go. Right? That's what you're getting out of this. Boss cards, stage cards, quest cards. You get 150 gold to, you know, buy stuff with. 150. I mean, are you going to keep track of that? That sounds kind of minutia. I hope not, though. And so we're scrolling down and there's movement. But guess what? There's also line of sight. If this isn't looking like a slight zombie side recent to you, you need to take a serious look here, right? Oh, look at this. Does this look familiar? Get more skills as you get more experience. Oh, we've seen that before, only there's a little bit more of it rather than just like one per section, which is always anticlimactic as a whole. I mean, you're getting your weapons, which have all the features that you may want with them. You can spend mana with them. It talks about the combat, your inventory and your weapons. Your board looks somewhat familiar there too. They give you a little class run down here and slight asymmetry, the undead that you're fighting, undead that you're fighting, right? You haven't heard that before in a CMON game. And then it talks about the fact that you're doing your player phase and your enemy phase. Players go, enemies go. Players go, enemies go. Series of rounds, go. So then they run you through the player phase here. Move, gather, reorganize, take up your token, open and shut doors, search and grab more stuff. And then they go to the enemies as well. They activate. They have move and attack. They move and attack. They move and attack. And that's what, what they do. And then, you know what, uh, if you lose, if you have more KO'd adventurers than health potions in all the inventories, so you get wounds and you get knocked out. So excuse my comparison to Cthulhu. I'm sorry, my lovely Cthulhu. Uh, this is zombie side combined with true bang is kind of what this looks like. So again, does this actually intrigue you? I, I like the aesthetic a ton more. The aesthetic is awesome. Miniatures look fantastic. But I don't see why I'm going to get this now. And I don't see if I have a zombie side. Is this dramatically enough different? Does a little bit of a spin here on the combat when you scroll down to that. Where you roll dice and you just have to beat the accuracy in order to do damage to it. You have dice, accuracy, armor penetration. So that's kind of how you're doing it. So you're getting loot as you defeat the enemies. Types of combat again. So I mean like this is an extensive rule book. But for a slightly heavier zombie side do you want to read a 50 page rule book do you want to have a 50 page rule book of overhead that's what i worry about i mean they talk about the armor and if you're not higher than that and armor penetration then you can't even do a wound even if you hit and i guess special locations that you're going to be able to explore and i'm sure the expansion will offer one or two extra zones or expansion areas that you're going to need to be able to locate and go to and they talk about mana zones and miss zones and treasure zones and equipment traits and all of that as well you know so does this look different enough to you it looks heavier to me but i'm not sure it looks necessarily that much more appealing i don't know again you're gonna get goblins included in this expansion because i mean again no offense but i don't want goblins as an expansion you know that doesn't intrigue me that doesn't excite me uh the pre-order exclusive here is just four new characters and again, if there's anything like a zombie side game, these characters aren't asymmetric enough to really need me to have, you know, an extra dozen or so. So I'm not really super excited by this. This is a ton of money for, well, not really as much as I was hoping for. Five classes, but okay, sure. Necromantic artifacts, whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, there's two videos from Board Game Co. down here. One's a preview, one's an overview. And then you get the painted miniatures and you can see how much it's going to cost you to get. So I don't know. 
They're doing easy pay they said at the top. I didn't think I'd be this ramped up and hyped up for this because I'm going into this page a little bit, you know, well, not as anticipatory pre-order excited as I was hoping for in the first sense. So I don't know. I mean, this is fantastic, I guess, but also I don't see shipping costs down here at all. So basically it's just kind of whatever because I'm sure that it's going to be not free shipping. So I don't know, right? This does not excite me. This does not bring me joy, as the famous quote goes. Does it bring you joy? I hope it brings you joy, but uh, I, I was hoping for something different than this. That's okay. I mean, it's not for me. Made my peace with that one. It's saving me money in my wallet more than anything else. So, But you know what? I'm probably just wrong. You check it out and you tell me that this is what you've been waiting for. And I'm okay with that too. So then let's just hop over here. Fox Experiment, because again, this one, I think irks people because they put out like a brand new edition of this after people literally just got their previous edition with some upgrades, and now you can pay more for getting extra stuff in your game upgraded as well. So yeah, oh, at least they're not like horribly ugly foxes um, that were the last time that were this amalgam of, of just shape that was not at all looking like a fox if you didn't have the screen printing on it. So that's cool. All tokens and dice are now wood though. Like I don't really wooden dice. Like that doesn't enthrall me. I, I guess, right? We talk about being more eco-friendly. Is you know this eco-friendly? I don't know. Is this appealing to people? I guess, do you need an upgraded edition of this? I guess I wonder like who was enticed or who was clamoring for this? Previous backers are paying an extra $40 to deluxify their already deluxified, deluxified game. So in case you're wondering, let's just pull up the old page for a second here. So if you bought the retail edition from them, it was $55 already. If you bought the Kickstarter edition there, it was $60. So you're going to pay $100 plus shipping twice on this game for a deluxified version without a five and six player. That's crazy. Now, again, you can pay $70 right now to basically get this $35 plus this $60 one. Although actually, maybe that doesn't include the expansion fifth and sixth player because I think that was actually an exclusive here, right? No. No, sorry, I'm wrong. The fifth and sixth player was extra on top of that. So if I'm doing this math right, you can pay $60 plus $35 plus shipping twice if you were an original person, or you could be getting in right now for $70 plus shipping once. If I'm doing that math right, and I hope I'm not, I hope I'm not, I would be a little bit... Mm, well, not happy if I was an original backer of this game and loved it. So I guess it's better to get now the second time around, right? But whew. I mean, Fox Experiment, right? It's an engine builder. Uh, there you go. Someone from the Dice Tower loves it more than, you know, Wingspan. I don't know. Haven't played it. Hasn't come across my board at all yet. Uh, plenty of other people are hyping it, though. And, you know, the other thing I'll say about this page is it offers you absolutely no incentive uh, to really get it, or if you haven't seen it before, to check it out, because they basically are going off of pedigree on this page. And I would argue that maybe that's why it's only got $23,000. One, because people who aren't familiar with it at all aren't going to be intrigued or interested by it. And the fact that you've got a couple quotes doesn't, you know, people want to know about the game, right? Put the game on the page. Don't show me the components. Don't show me quotes. You know, there's not even a rule book on the page. Like, that's just... You know, if you want people to give you their money, you I'm sorry, you got to put a little bit more effort into the page and some of those things. I, I don't care if you have all of the biggest channels that cover board games on there. People want to feel like you're enticing them, not just, you know, kind of putting it out there. And do you really need a deluxified, deluxified, deluxified? And did this really need to go to crowdfunding? I guess is the other question. I don't know. Small business, but we'll see where it goes. I mean, I would be surprised if this doesn't end up funding just because people do love their deluxifications. I'm, you know, not, nothing against you if you do one of those people, but um, you know what? We'll see where it goes because otherwise, you know, people follow suit where the money is. So if this is successful, expect to see this with other games too. Food for thought. Next up, Reign of Hades, Legend Crafters. $127,000 at the time of filming this, almost 300% of its funding goal. So what do you need to know? Miniature driven, uh, cooperative, potentially competitive as well one versus one two versus two you versus the game and then also a scenario driven uh sort of potentially individual scenarios uh that you can play through as well 
And again, the thing I'll say is that this rule book is really, it's a little bit of a more of a difficult read because what they've done is they've kind of set it out and had that the basic rules, but on every page, there's like also iconography color boxes for like, okay, if you're playing solo or if you're playing the scenario or if you're playing the two versus two mode. And so it's a little bit difficult of a read just because again, like here, the blue boxes are something else. The red box is something else there. So depending on which one you're doing, you're adding in and even on this page, right? Like yellow is one thing, blues are another, red's another. And so it's a little bit crowded and I kind of wish it was separated out because it's kind of like, okay, which one am I reading? Which one am I trying to remember? Which one is just for this one? Which one is for all of them? And so this is a tough read of a rule book, no, no lie. So if you're really interested in this one, you got to read it. Um, but it's also laid out more as like a just detailed list as opposed to necessarily um, laying it out directly in terms of, okay, the action sequencing. It gives a very good detailed explanation of each of the individual elements, but it's a little bit harder to connect the dots on this rule book. So if you're looking at this, you may actually want to go down and check out one of the videos this week as well to get a better sense of the flow of the game. Because essentially what you're doing is you're making your way across this map, trying to battle, and there's going to be two different action locations that you can be taking, either the battlefield or cover. And you're going to be having cards that are uh, not double-sided, but being able to be flipped around depending on what area you're in you use one half of the card or the other and you're doing sort of an action programming-esque type feel in order to aid your um you know potential ally if you're playing with more than one person or as they say the lone wolf scenario where you're playing like a one-on-two version and so it's a two-player simultaneous play head-to-head -head game so uh, some of the scenarios are a little bit different objectively. Like if you're going cooperatively, for example, one of the scenarios is you just got to make your way to the other side, but you have to get around this huge giant troll uh, monster, essentially, and, you know, make it by without being killed. And so as you're playing uh, competitively, you're going to also be slowly uh, taking cards, monster cards, and engaging them with your characters and having to be able to battle them, defeat them, utilize your actions to go across the board and uh, not get defeated by not being able to take them out on a turn-by-turn -turn basis with the weapons that are provided for you in the first place. The Deluxe Edition here is going to give you game components, one big box, and a UV spotlight. So uh, what's the difference, though? What's the actual difference? It includes all monster miniatures, additional characters, and the metal ecor, which is like your health, all packaged in a box with scenario boxes and UV on the outside. And then the base pledge is going to give you all the exclusives and including the uh, actual game core itself. And then this is going to give you two additional characters, Poseidon and Aphrodite. So I like that you can piecemeal it. Super Deluxe, Acrylics, and a dice set. So a few unlocks here as additional characters. So, I mean, that's cool. That makes it actually probably a relatively better price if you're looking at uh, one of these two lower levels as well. If you can piecemeal it and get them uh, with additional characters as a whole. So... Um, again, though, you know, the, the page, it runs you through some of these, but you can't tell like the differences with some of these characters, like how unique are they going to be? Well, they say right here, each character is going to have 15 cards that you're going to be utilizing. Um, monster miniatures, you know, your classic Greek mythology there as a whole. So at the time of me filming this, I believe there's supposed to be a copy on its way for me uh, as a prototype to be able to talk about sometime during the campaign. And they give you a nice graphic down here that you can kind of see. Uh, you're going to get the, well, the world map, the count, all the extras here. If you're doing the standard edition, the deluxe edition, it tells you what you get right here as well. So, you know, for 20 extra euros, are you okay with 10 extra euros per character as well? Maybe with some applicable character unlocks, if there's something more specific there in addition. And then it gives you a little bit, again, I like this graphic down here, how this is much easier than looking at the pledge levels. And then 15 encounter miniatures. So do you need the miniatures or not? Again, I give them kudos because uh, like Awakened Realms, do you really need them? goes through the action mechanism system here that I said, enhancing your combats, enhancing your abilities, enhancing your dice even, the ones that you're allocating for the battles in the first place. And then uh, you're going uh, head to head and side to side here to be able to support each other on the uh, battling side of things in the first place, trying to upgrade your character to get their divinity upgraded and well, managing your resources. So that's kind of a cool dial. Uh, slightly different tracking than what you're used to. Again, uh, with uh, Nectar, Might, Spark, and Carry Capacity, as well as Divinity. So the aesthetic is pretty awesome. The Lone Wolf is solo, and then a few preview videos down here if you're interested. Again, I'd probably recommend watching uh, the Gaming Rules one here. It really gives you a much better sense of the overview, and it gives you a sense of the scenario as well. I think, I think this is going to be a very interesting test of the market as something slightly different as a whole. So... Uh, we'll see again. Ooh, ooh, that's a big, big far out date there though. And so you're looking at a year and a half. Oh, actually almost a year and three quarters at the time of me filming this. So 
Um, not to, to be filming this and, you know, you watching is going to change the delivery date, right? That's the end of 2025. That's a long ways off. That's a long ways off. I hope that's an under promise over deliver sort of situation where they're saying, Hey, it's going to take us a year and a half, but, uh, maybe we'll get it to you in, you know, a year and, you know, a quarter or something along those lines. So reign of Hades, uh, if you're interested, stay tuned, subscribe. If you're not subscribed, cause I'll probably be covering it in an individual video later this month. You know, let's talk about it because I covered it as well earlier this week. I did it combined with battle crest and that's river Valley glassworks which again, as a small box game from all play, got $200,000. You know, all of the other reviews similar to mine as well, we, we all kind of compared it to Azul because that's probably the closest thing you can compare it to, but it's a lot more tactical. It's a lot more random, but the overhead is aesthetically pleasing and it's easy to get to the table. One to five players. The only thing I worry about is the fact that uh, when you're drafting these gems, um, you know, you're not really going to know kind of what exactly is going to be behooving you the most. So on a turn by turn, action by action system, you really have little control, especially if you're playing with any more than, well, one other player. And so you can basically kind of just turn away from the board. It's one of those games if it's not your turn and then look and action optimize when it gets back around to you. And so how do you feel about that type of game? Me personally, I have no problem with it. Me personally, I'm OK with that. And then the grid scoring system, as you're gathering these gems of the six columns that you're creating, you score rows and columns. You score highest two columns. Uh, starting with the lowest value ones. So you really have to prioritize getting further on the column track and higher up, and then also making complete rows at the bottom as much as you can so you have an even spread. So that's going to be the dichotomy of sort of this, okay, how do I maximize it just like you do with the Azules of making your pattern matching on that aspect. So you're drafting from the river. You take from the tiles of the ones that are adjacent to the ones that you place down. So if you have a pentagon shape, you place it on the pentagon square on the river, but then you can take the tiles from either side of that tile. And so that's how you can sort of uh, get what you get. But then if you have two of the same, you can place them on any and then draft accordingly. And as you run out, then you have to draft from the end pool at the end of the river and you have to grab four of them. And at any time you overflow any of your columns or your playing hand that you can hold in the first place, they're basically negative points. So again, it's going to be potentially maybe a little bit of take that, but honestly, it's going to be probably too random for you to hate draft like you could in Azul. And that's maybe going to be the bigger difference for you if you didn't like that aspect. And you get a sleeve, you get a little backer, you get a little medallion and you get stretch goals. So let's see what those stretch goals are. And again, the acrylic, the glass board, cardboard, again, the acrylic pieces, the boards, the markers. Uh, let's see, deluxe edition here, the UV, the river tiles, and the play mat. I do like me a nice play mat. And that, 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 little markers. Again, okay, so what are the stretch goals here? What are the stretch goals? How to play, we already covered that. We'll skip down to the stretch goals since I already talked to you about that. First player token, modular expansion, and that's what I said on my video, right? Like they're gonna give you something else in addition. And you know, that's kind of what I said in my video. I, I'd like a little bit of something else. So if that gives me a little bit of asymmetry uh, with what is this, six cards? Okay, so six cards, so one for each player. And two AI opponents, okay, solo players, junkies there, and then another modular expansion. So I would imagine that they've maybe got one or two other things. And if you can add a little bit of modularity, I would probably never play without those modulars uh, because those modulars, because I just think it needs a little something extra from me personally. So there you go. Uh, good rules videos on this page, tell you how to play it. And um, mine came out late, so it didn't make the page. <laughs> I'm I'm like that. It's me. That's me more than anything else. And then Lure, uh, their other game is going down here, 20 minutes, two to five players. And what you're doing here is essentially you've got the ability to do a dice rolling and bidding game. So basically you bid your dice. You see what's out there, lower bid goes first. You roll your dice. If you can get the target, you get to catch it. If you don't, somebody else goes next. Then you get a little mini expansion again to go along with it as well. So I didn't know anything about lure prior to this uh, campaign going. So again, just a nice little small box bid roll fast game. So I'm not really surprised. This is all plays niche. They do a great job of this niche and uh, you know, it shows $200,000. So if you like this style of things, yeah, it is something slightly different, slightly akin to what you're maybe familiar with with Azul. So if that intrigues you, give it a look-see or check out my video on my page. But check out one of those other ones because I'm sure they're better and just, you know, better overall. So don't watch mine. Go watch somebody else's, right? <laughs> what channel says that? Go watch other people's videos instead of mine. Well, that's me. That's what you get. Next up, the massive winner uh, this week as well is Super Boss Monster with $400,000. Again, like I know people have nostalgia for this one, and I know people like this style of things. It's especially a little bit lighter. It fell a little flat with me, but this one looks like it has a little bit more legs, so I'd be interested to try this one out at some point. And so what you're doing, essentially, if you're not familiar with the original Boss Monster, is you're drafting these cards 
from the town and then you're building your little dungeon and they put a little twist on things a little bit of different constraint on things as well and so the basic gist of it is you draw up a number of cards of rooms that you're going to be laying out as a dungeon card to the left of your boss as you're playing them on a round by round basis you also have a spell card two spell cards actually in your hand and so on a turn by turn basis you are drafting either new dungeon cards or the new spell card gets turned up in the market then you are subsequently trying to bait or lure those heroes based on the treasure cards that are on the dungeon cards that you're laying down uh, that matches the corresponding symbol on their cards uh, when their turns go. The AI, the enemy, whatever you want to call it, turns. And so whoever has the most, they get the hero. And then the hero has to tra trespass or traverse across your cards until you kill them or they get to the boss. And, well, you want to kill them because that's how you earn more treasure, more loot, and more reward. And whoever has the most of these souls killed by the end of the game wins. And so the other twist on it is there's going to be a new town board in the middle that you get to place your little icon on in order to get more unique actions or upgrades or asymmetry, additional layer of, well, depth to give you a little bit more, well, this is what I'm going to be able to do with it. So it's giving you a solo mode as well. Unfortunately, I'd like to see a rule book just to know, again, a little bit more of the nuance of the combo and how these cards are going to be a little bit different than uh, the original, a little bit spicier, a little bit more complex, a little bit more just, you know, cool. But there's nothing there from that aspect of things. And so the only uh, video or actually explanation any further is the how to play video from uh, Becca Scott and uh, their channel, um, which I'm completely blanking on at the time of me filming this. Uh, you've got some stretch goals here, which again, a little bit of uh, content and a little bit of deluxification mixed. So that's going to be the question with Brotherwise. I mean, they, they've kind of done a little bit of the Kickstarter packs in the in the past, as well as a little bit of the deluxifications with uh, the other one, uh, By the Sea, that I'm blanking on right here, Castles by the Sea, which had a little bit of screen printed and a little bit of expansion content for a better price. So it looks to be very similar with this. And again, I just kind of wish I could have a little bit more hands-on before. This one has, you know, something I'd be interested in to play with my kids a ton. But it also has a very much try-before-I-buy vibe for me. Just knowing my own personal preferences that the first one was not enough for me, I would be hesitant to pay, you know, another 60 bucks plus shipping for this one at this time. So, and that'd be my only concern. Now, this is uh, backwards compatible for 75 and, excuse me, $45 here. But you're also going to get a neoprene mat. So that's really the question. If it's only $30 and you're going to be able to get a promo, what is the retail edition going to look like price-wise? So you're taking a little bit of gamble there. You really think this is going to be less than $30 at retail or around that or slightly higher. And if it's around that or slightly higher, then you really do get a benefit potentially from the promo. And depending on how much goes in the promo, that's what you may need to decide, especially comparatively to how many cards are in the base game as a whole, which I did not see a number of in the first place. I would be intrigued to know uh, just because, again, like you compare, okay, what percentage of the base game components compared to the Kickstarter, right? If there's 60 dungeon cards that are unique in the base game and there's a six card promo pack or a 10 card promo pack, right? 10 compared to 60, that's a good chunk. But if it's like there's 120 in the base game and you get five, right? That's a different dichotomous, uh, you know, fraction there. So there you go. Super boss monster killing it though. Check it out. Now, next up, Ludus Magnus, Requiem, Downfall of Magic, cooperative scenario driven uh, four player narrative campaign and so what you've got going on here as the newest one from ludus magnus again as one that's supposed to be coming to me in the mail as a prototype uh they've got a little bit of a different campaign they say just from the get-go you have two different types of stretch goals here one economic and one daily so i mean what you've seen uh, elsewhere with other campaigns right money related and time related and it looks like they're taking a page from a little bit of Wake and Realms here as well. They're going to give you some options of input, what you're going to be doing as, you know, sort of a stretch goal content here as well. So this is also, if you're not familiar with their other products, going to be a little bit of a crossover into their narrative universe of Nova Atos, which also covers the Black Rose War. But in this situation, you're going to be getting a little bit new gameplay element to go along with it. You're also going to have two pledges that are specifically for more crossovers, depending on which of those other franchises you're a fan of in the first place. So essentially, as we get down to the overview here, what you've got going on is sort of akin to uh, Journeys to Middle Earth or, you know, sort of the Descent newest edition, where you're going to be traversing, taking actions, taking skills, but also having like a 3D battle map. Um, that you're more familiar with the journeys of middle earth here as you can see with this sort of setup and you're going to have four different classes of characters each with unique skills unique upgrades and unique dice that are going to be slightly different and asymmetric depending on the class in the first place you can see the basic overview of this is actions right walking slinking running exploring and so very similar in the sense that it's going to have an overworld and then a card play driven skill mechanic there running into enemies fighting them a very akin to the journeys of middle earth in the overview here not only in how you're going to be activating these enemies on a turn by turn while exploration based basis but then also how you're going to be going up against them 
It also gives you additional effects and actions, including utilize, donate, and recover as you're going along, and you can exploit other actions when character is given the opportunity, as you know, you may interact with other things on the board as well. Gives you a few other examples of what you're gonna be dealing with, as well as the enemies here in the rule books. And it just basically says, okay, well, how do you defeat enemies? How do you deal with traits, conditions, and other things that are going to be going along in this game as a whole? Gives you a little bit of an overview as well as the items that you're gonna be running into, the equipment that you're gonna be managing, and the treasure that you're going to be looting as you go along. As I mentioned, save, campaign, scenario, connected system. And so you have a progress track, you have a time track, you have a threat track, and you also have, well, you know, a put away save sort of situation. So if you wanna resume it as well, you can do that. And it tells you how to do that at the beginning of this. Chaining effects is gonna be using the combo system as you aid other players going along. And then if we go back to the page itself here, you can kind of see that they've divided this up somewhat differently than what you're used to in some of the pledge levels here, because what you've got going on is they say they want to make these interconnected with all the other games that are previous to that I mentioned with Black Rose Wars and Nova Atos. And so the first two pledge levels actually down here, Magician and Adventurer here, additional content for Nova Atos based on this game. And then Magician is just additional content for Black Rose Wars based on this game. So the actual pledge that you want to get for this game, though, is 149 euros. And that is, well, you know, this game as a whole, including the expansion, the stretch goal box, and everything else that goes along with it. So that's expensive. That's an expensive game, no lie. Like I had to read through this a couple times to see that, okay, these aren't just individual like partial games. These are separate pledges, the Magician and the Adventurer. The Order pledge is the one you want if you're getting the game. And it gives you a little bit of a breakdown there as well. A few add-ons that you can uh, score if you prefer to get some of the other stuff piecemealed. And what else is exclusive? And the rule book, again, it's an extensive rule book, folks. This is a 44 page rule book, I think. Yep, see, there you go, 44 pages down at the bottom of the screen. And again, it runs you through everything you're gonna need to know, but it's a little bit more extensive or labored in terms of some of those gameplay mechanics. So is that going to appeal to you? And then the last thing, I, I actually like this disclaimer, um, languages, actually, I skipped over it. They said, you know what, we're gonna do it in two languages, but if you want an additional language, it's gonna cost you know somewhere between 40 to $60,000 to get additional language. So you're gonna try and take into account how many other languages, including German, French, and Spanish are gonna be you know interested in, but they can't promise it. And you know what, I'd rather under promise over deliver. So don't promise a language at the beginning if you can't do it. Cause I know see, I see more comments upset that those language edition takes longer or it's more expensive and you know what uh, i hate saying that but yeah you know what I, I, even if it wasn't in my language i'd rather know up front it's not going to be or i may have to pay extra because then you don't have to worry about you know what you're going to do down the line if you already know that up front wise you may not like it but at least they're telling you straightforward there so hopefully again another one i'll have a video out of the near future and that's requiem downfall of magic check it out so i mean i have to talk about this right gummy quest fantasy gummies do you want to make fantasy gummies right that's that's all I've got, right? You get gummies. You can, you know, eat them and you could play a game with them too. But who wants to play the game with them? You just want to eat them. Let's not kid ourselves here. It's a freaking dragon and a freaking death uh, avatar right there. Another freaking dragon. That's cool. I mean, it's going to cost way too much. I don't even know how much this is going to cost. I kind of want to know though. So my wife or kids would love these. Oh, $39 for an early bird. Was there a super special early bird, I bet? Yeah, $34. So... I mean, how many gummies do you get, though, in the box, right? Gummies, 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 top creators. So 151 gummies. Huh. That's a lot of gummies. Okay. We're going to save that. Remind me for later. Ha! Didn't think you'd be getting that in the middle of this video, did you? By the way, I just like that they go with Gummy Quest. Delicious fantasy gummies. As opposed to the other campaign that's upcoming later with gummies, that is the horribly disgusting tasting gummies. Graphic novels, here you go. Graphic novels from Van Ryder. Um, you know, they actually sent me a, a email, you know, months ago asking if I wanted to review some of these. These aren't my thing. <laughs> I, I, I'm just not good at this sort of puzzle solving graphic novel style of things. I know people love these though. And these are becoming more and more popular. One, graphic novels, but two, the sort of puzzle solving escape room-esque vibe. And this just has a cooler aesthetic. So that, that seems kind of cool. Sherlock Holmes, Supernatural. I'm a big fan of Sherlock Holmes. I don't know if I've ever told this story. I was with some people at work one time, like, like a decade ago. I made a joke with my boss about somebody's last name being uh, Baskerville and just, you know, something, something, you know, something quippy about that. And the two younger people were like, they just didn't get it, right? Because it was, I related it to asking if basically they had hounds and dogs at their house. And the two younger folks working with us, they completely went over their heads. And so um, I was like, really? 
Really? Sherlock Holmes, man. Anyway, so you want all the books, you get $80. Otherwise, you a la carte them for $20 here. Again, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. This isn't my thing, but I like this style of things and I like the covering it. So, I mean, and they say like, you know what? Revisit them. You know, you can kind of maybe do it next time. Otherwise, you know what I've seen? People do them with the escape room games too and the puzzles with those where, you know what? You bundle them, you ship them onto the next one, right? Just like with time stories. And you know what? That's okay. Because you know what? You get a couple hours out of each of them and you have fun. So do you really worry about replayability with something like this? Probably not. So graphic novels, they are what they are. Van Ryder puts out a quality product. Again, this is not their first one either, right? This is season five. So people like it. It's a quality product. They're putting money into it again. So if it's new to you, go check it out. Maybe Shogun revised edition queen games. I feel like they've thrown this on some of their other campaigns recently as like add-ons. And this is like a revised edition and the upgrade kit you have to buy separately. And the upgrade kit, from what I saw people talking about on uh, the Board Game Geek forums, the upgrade kit alone is $60. So $60 here for all of this stuff. 3D plastic buildings, wooden armies, that's a ton of stuff army-wise. Uh, you're basically converting them into meeples and you're basically just upgrading all of the pieces. So that's, that's a lot of money though. $60 plus shipping for upgraded you know, revised edition, which doesn't include the upgrades as well. So the revised edition alone is going to cost you $60. So that's 120, except you get the wooden samurai with it. Those guys down there, maybe. Okay. Uh, for a game that's been out for a while, it's a, still a lot of money. What's the big box going for now? Again, 120. So it's not even really saving you any money. So it's a lot of money for what it is. You can also get the big box of Wallen's stein i've never even heard of that so uh interesting there's no pledge manager as well i believe they say so if you're looking for it and you really wanted shogun and you really love shogun i mean queen's giving it to you i like the fact that they've got the big box rules on the page including the new uh content here for the tenos court but are you a fan of this um again no gameplay mechanics on the page i'd like to see that rather than just uh, a video from shut up and sit down so Again, is this interesting to you? It must be for some people because again, $30,000 is still $30,000 and it's impressive, but you have to love a game to pay $60 on top of, you know, the price of the game itself, essentially to upgrade it to that extent. So if you do, there you go. You have your opportunity. Next, Acornism, Japanese game. I'm supposed to have one of these coming in the mail too. Uh, you know me, I'm a sucker. I have a blind spot for these games and this is more abstract tile laying puzzle placement where you're placing these tiles around and you're trying to essentially get the best sum of the pieces as you're laying them. What you have here is again, nice little cutesy animal earthy vibe going on, tile placement in 20 minutes. So this originally came out during one of the, I believe Tokyo game markets. And now they're coming over here, Phantom Lab, the creator through Phantom Lab, and they're bringing it to crowdfunding. And again, $6,000. And you may scoff at that folks, but again, $6,000 for a game that's only gonna cost you $19 there. Or if you really wanna get the special version there, it's gonna cost you just over $20. New international version, which is gonna get you a little bag with it. So what are you doing though? Well, you're surrounding creatures based on the number of acorns that they need to earn points. So spatial puzzle game in 20 minutes. What you're doing is you're placing these tiles, surrounding the animals, and then scoring based on how many acorns are around. You start with four of these in your hand, you place them on any side of an existing forest tile in the first place, and then if it's totally surrounded, count the number of acorns orthogonally, right? Up, down, left, right. And if it matches the requirements, you get one of your scoring tokens on the animal. Well, if the animal shows eight, you got eight, you get your little, you know, chip on there. And if you get a magical acorn, they can be worth anything that you want. Draw a new tile, rinse and repeat, play up to eight by eight squares. When you can't play a new tile, game ends. That's it. Again, I think this is nice. This is a nice little abstract. I don't need the bag. The bag's kind of cool though. I wish it was like a cloth mat. Is that kind of what it is? A reusable carry bag. Okay. Okay. You know what? You could take it or leave it. It's got a couple stickers. I mean, again, this isn't something that you're probably going to get like a super, super awesome value with, but you probably will never find this game again as a whole. So then we have a few add-ons here of upcoming, uh, not really widely released games at all, or if, if at all yet, uh, limited copies of all of them. Palindomes, which is a palindromic based, uh, you know, basically little meeple puzzle game. Uh, Orchard Quartet, again, another tile laying game here, 20 available there, limited copies available there. 
Astrios here. I can barely pronounce it. Tile placement, constellation making, and then push off puzzle game for two players. Each tile has a Japanese character and pushing them into power out in the field gets more points. I have no clue, but I'm going to read the rules for all of those to kind of see. Miss Merck here does a great explanation overview of these. And she and along with Cardboard East here are people that I follow to kind of know one of these uh, games coming out of especially Japan are, you know, looking good, looking solid. And, you know, how they feel about them often influences me, to be frank with you guys. So you wonder where I get some of this stuff. It's from them as well. So check them out in addition. No pledge manager, though. So if you're interested, again, for like 20 to $40, you're not going to find these games elsewhere. You just won't find them on the secondary market, period. So if you're interested, as always, from anywhere from like Korea or Japan, you got to get these games now. Don't FOMO, though. If they're not right for you, they're not right for you. Ultimate Game Night Game, the board game bag. I don't know. There have been so many of these on crowdfunding that I just can't even tell them apart anymore. This looks very similar to one I had that my wife got me a couple years ago. And I'd love to try one of these out sometimes, but I also just can't tell. Like, it looks like it's got an additional pouch right there and mine's black. And that's all about I know. And is it going to be storing more games? That'd be what I'd be curious about. Is it just bigger than the one I have in the first place? So carrying your beverages. Um, I, I That was a cool and Lorado thing right there. Uh, I don't really want to carry my beverages in the same bag as I'm carrying my games. I don't know about you guys. Um, okay, that's a very interesting test on a forklift. So cool, there you go. And large games. So while well, you're scoring like six or seven games in there probably. Uh, so maybe slightly bigger than maybe the one I have in the first place. How much is it though? Again, I have no clue what the price of these goes for at retail because my wife bought mine and I have no idea. So $100 though, Oof, that's expensive. Is that better, worse, or about the same? No idea. Check out some videos from people who tested it and want to play with it and... You can see if you want to buy a bunch of them and get it for a slightly reduced price at $85 per bag. Remember, buying more to save more, not always what you're doing as the best policy. So you're still spending more. I don't know. There you go. Talking about it. Talking about gummies and bags this week. Whew, that's what we got going on. So next up, again, this one's very interesting to me. This is how it's try before I buy written all over it though right now. But very intriguing concept, right? Six forms. They say they're combining sort of a chess TCG style and a four by four grid as you're laying these cards down upgrading them, combining them with over 250 unique cards that you're pulling from, well, the TCG style boosters, right? So you go head to head and very tactically driven battlefield that you're laying these cards down on in order to, well, defeat your opponent. Unfortunately, the page doesn't really give you a whole lot more than that in terms of the mechanics, the interactions, as well as you can see, like the text on those cards is rather extensive. So again, I'd like to see a little bit more of a, a flow and you may have to watch one of the videos, but the other tricky point, right, is a starter kit here is gonna get you $27. What does the starter kit actually get you though in there? Well, doesn't exactly say. So get the starter kit and 24 boosters to build decks and improve, but that's going to cost you 113, which I mean, I guess comparatively, right? Like Star Wars Unlimited, a booster right now because of scalpers in the secondary markets, they're sitting where somewhere between 125 and $135 a booster box, which has 24 packs with 16 cards in it each. But also at their lowest point, they were sitting like $88. So then $88 plus a two player starter kit is going to bring you about the same price. So I guess the pricing is about on par. And if you want to get four boosters while well, you do that, and if you want way too many, 24 displays of 24. Okay, that's a ton. So again, I just wish there was a little bit more of what you're getting with this and how it actually entails, right? Again, it gives you what the packs are going to be breaking down to rare, super rare, hidden foils, all that stuff. So it, very similar to what you're seeing. Otherwise, I think the aesthetic is kind of cool. I like the aesthetic as a whole. And it's a first edition again, to entice the collectors from that side of things. But um, you may have to go to Board Game Geek to read reviews, and you're going to have to watch some video to actually know any sort of mechanical interactions because that's all it freaking has on the page. So I think you could be missing out here if you just don't have an idea of why you're going to love this game, why you should you get this game, why is this a good combination, how are the interactions actually happening on the board, what's the actual end game, how do you win? And there's nothing explained of that on the page as a whole. So you can check out the rule book here, though, if you really want. You can check out a how to play and a watch it played. So it's going to give you information. You can even try it on Tabletop Simulator. But again, just look at Fox Experiment, right? I want to see some of this stuff on the page, not always be clicking links out, even though, you know, it is helpful. And by the way, when I say watch it played here, not actually like watch it played. I think that's a little bit of a, <laughs> right? But it's a watch it played video, a playthrough of it online. The other thing, just skimming over the rule book here, just to give you a quick setup and the four by four grid. Um, <laughs> right, I'd be worried a little bit at the beginning if you're not one of those people, right? Math, rounding uh round to the nearest whole number Whew. i hope there's not too much rounding and too much uh division and multiplication going on there uh but they talk you through okay the battlefield the resource system that you're going to be utilizing 
how you're going to be playing cards, the types of different cards that you're going to be playing and going through, uh, revealing as you're going and playing, how you're going to be revealing, as well as how the cards are going to be moving around on the battlefield in a chess-like nature in the first place. So how do you deal with multiple cards in a zone? How do these move and attack and battle each other? And how do you do the damage calculation? So it gives you a little bit more example here if you're really looking for it, including some of those things I was just mentioning, the card effects and the triggers that are going to go along with it. I mean, it's a good, good layout of a rule book here if you want to get a better sense of things. But I'd like to probably watch the playthrough video to get a good sense of, okay, how interactive, how take that, how, 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 you know, strongly is this going to be battling back and forth and is there going to be a little bit too much AP if there's really that much text? I mean, cool concept. Last up here, we have Spy Outs. It's basically like a war meets Egyptian rat screw. If you remember like your youth and whatever you call that game, essentially, right? All you have are number cards and action cards. They don't actually give you a good description of what some of these action cards are, but I'm assuming they're just going to be ways to kind of mess with the game as a whole, both a physical and a mental side of things. And you have a number of cards in your hand that you start out with, a certain number of numbered cards, as well as an action card or two. And you have three numerical sets of numbers in front of you and you just lay a card down discard a card or draw a card essentially or play one of your action cards and then what you're going to be doing here is just trying to complete your number sets and then as you're drawing from the middle you replenish them and if you replenish them and an action cards up and an action card comes up then you just slap it and claim it so that's what you do and then it's first one to finish all three of theirs wins so twenty dollars light card game if you want a briefcase a Edition, you can pay $50 for it with some mats too. So awesome. A bunch of additional add-ons. It's got $11,000 and $5 or $15 or $10, depending on where in the world you are for shipping. So that's it. So that's game. Spiles, check it out. That's it, folks. That's it. And at the end here, I got nothing special except for thank you. Thank you. We just hit 10K this week. I didn't even notice. One of the Patreon folks, Hans sent me a message saying, hey, by the way, you just hit 10K. And I was like, what? Because I wasn't expecting it hit until like um, next month, to be honest. Uh, I don't pay attention to those things. I know like, you know, once a week, I kind of, you know, do one of these things on the YouTube like numbers page. But otherwise, I just don't really look at it a whole lot because I hate doing that. So uh, yeah, otherwise, I'm debating about whether or not to buy more Star Wars Unlimited right now. Boy, it's, it's Star Wars crack, right? <laughs> Uh, but news video talking about that Star Wars crack tomorrow because they already announced wave two. They just announced another wave of Lorcana. I think that's like four, five, 15, whatever that is. And then, um, yeah, I got nothing else going on. Just family stuff this weekend. Not working. Working over Easter, unfortunately. So, yeah. Eh. But then kind of like coincides with some time off. Uh, totally coincidentally, didn't plan this at all with my kids spring break. So, you know, I guess you win some, lose some, right? It's kind of that dilemma. Uh, I'd love to have a couple days off without the kids. The kids are in school, right? But it's nice also because otherwise this time of year, I don't get any time with them during the week a whole lot as a whole. So, I mean, we had about 45 minutes that when I got home today between when I left and when I got home because uh, kid had gymnastics and we have to leave like half an hour travel time for gymnastics. And so then he gets home, you know, it's like 7.30. You know, my kids start getting to bed around then usually, not like sleeping, but going to bed. And so, you know, between, uh, what was it, maybe 7 o'clock in the morning and 7.30 at night, that's not even going to the gym today. I had, you know, 25 minutes with one of them this afternoon and, you know, 15 minutes of before bed. So, you know, it's just less than ideal, right? Like, personal philosophy, I don't think we were meant to live like this. Anyway, side tangent there, whole soapbox that, you know, you don't want to hear that on Board Game Channel. Do you? Anyway, that's why you tune in. That's somehow how I got to 10,000. And uh, I need to play some uh, new stuff this weekend. I need to maybe play some Aqua. Uh, I've got a couple games coming to crowdfunding in the next week or two. AI Apocalypse. Uh, it's a card-driven deck builder-esque game. So I'll have a video out for that on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, the upcoming, my most anticipated, updated crowdfunding games, as well as the Star Wars Unlimited unboxing like I alluded to previously in yesterday's Don't Buy It at Retail video. Because don't do me yesterday. I have way too many of those games or want too many of those games on the retail list from this past month. Not a good thing. Do what I say, not what I do. That's all I got. Stay classy. Have a great freaking weekend. Play something fun. Don't play stuff you don't like. That's not fun. Peace out. And thank you again.
somehow getting me to 10k now can we get to 20k in less than three years you know let's do it less than three and a half ha! check it out if it's for you interesting combination here in an individual video 